Chad Hansen from Mojave Mortgage, and today on Mojave Mortgage Adventures, we're out at Circle T Honey Ranch out in Havasu Heights. I'm here with BJ and Don. They're the proprietors of Circle T Honey, and they're going to show us everything it takes to be a beekeeper and to harvest honey today. Let's go suit up and play with some bees. So we're driving out to the mean bee colony, a large portion of their, of their honey bees. And Don tells us that these bees are angry bees, so some of them, yeah. we're not going to get too too involved in them. We're just going to get some shots, and we're going to kind of let you all see what exactly it is that a honey farm looks like, or a honey bee farm. Is that what you call it, Don? Yeah. How many now? You have how many hives out here? There's probably between 40 and 50. 40 and 50 hives. Yeah. All right. So tell us where to go. Uh, just all over this road out. How many how many acres are out here, Don? There's five acres. Yeah. It doesn't really take a whole lot. Uh, matter of fact, most beekeepers they don't even own their own the property where they have bees. They just you just lease they, it. They get people to let them put their bees on their property. And a lot of them, say like the commercial beekeepers, they'll have around 40 to the yard. They'll have different yards. You know, a lot of them were. We keep our bees at home. We don't take them anywhere, even though I do have one hive that I'm gonna take up to the wall pies in the morning that uh, they want for uh, for pollination, just to pollinate their garden. So I'm gonna take a hive up there for them. So is that common? People will call a beekeeper and have them send bees yeah. out to pollinate a garden? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty common. Now bees have to have water, so if you want to look at that, this is a tank that I have, a thousand gallon tank up there, and it's all gravity fed to come down to the water. I just got a kitty pool with a, with a pond material in it, and you can see the bees all working that, that water. When it gets really hot, uh, well even now, they need water to cool their hive. What know, is, especially how, when it gets really, you know, 110 degrees and so stuff. So what do they do? They put it on their body and use their wings or something? Yeah, they'll take it in the hive and, and they're also fanning the hive to, to cool that, that hive, just like a, a air conditioner or something, you know. Really? Fan, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so all that's gravity fed. It just I just got to make sure that the tank's got water in it. So you have to haul water out here and just fill yeah. it up with a water truck? Or yeah. Something? Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And then it just has a little trickle feeder? Yeah, just has a little thing like they use for horses uh, is actually what it is that, that uh, get the water fill up to that and then it shuts that float off. Okay. You know, so when it, as it goes down, more water will come in and keep it that same level. So do they know we're here? Oh yeah. Oh, all right. It only takes them a few minutes. Palaverde is, you know, we have a lot of Palaverde trees, and, and, and actually the Palaverde is probably not 100% Palaverde, you know, it's got like the wildflower in it too, you know, but it's, but it's mostly Palaverde is what we try to do. So the honey, the honey and that, that you, and just wildflower, you know. So the honey that you produce primarily is, uh, the, it comes from the nectar of the Palo Verde tree? Right, so the does yellow that give, bloom. Does yeah. that give the, the honey a different taste than you'd find in other regions? Or? Yeah. Well, I, I don't see Palo Verde anywhere, you know, I mean. You so know, you have a unique product. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it. Uh, I've asked uh, another beekeeper that, and he said, you know, I used to get Palo Verde, but I just don't get it anymore, you know. Really? And I don't know if you don't try or, or what it is, but... Now, how do, how do you tell the difference between a Palo Verde honey and a, what other types of honey are there? Well, the Palo Verde is, uh, is a really light honey. It, it's, it's a lot of times uh, real... It, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's, it has a little golden tint to it. Okay. But it's, it's pretty clear. So with some of the darker honeys, it's, yeah. it's just, a, it's so when the, the bees are producing the honey, the, the nectar that they get from different plants is different colors? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. like mesquite a lot of times is a, a dark, you know, and uh, and then the wildflower is a, is a, is a darker than say like the Palo Verde. It's a, it's a sometimes real dark and sometimes it's like 
a medium, you know, uh, color. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, I would have yeah. never guessed that. And that's why I say there we don't have a hundred percent, but I think to be able to call it a unique name like wildflower or palo verde or whatever mesquite and all that uh see these are honey that's arizona honey okay you know i mean there's a lot of other honeys from different parts of the country but uh but uh but the arizona honey and mesquite is uh is uh unique to arizona because of the mesquite trees we have here not all states have mesquite trees now this is a very unique bee it looked like almost looked like a hornet yeah it might be a different uh i even had a yellow jacket out here uh, last time i was out here that was trying to get to the honey and do that look like a yellow jacket now if another species comes in will the will the worker bees or, or kill that species if they get into the hive yeah the more than likely they'll kill that they'll attack them they, yeah they'll kill it yeah don i have one last question does this suit make me look bad uh, no, no. Okay, good. No, you look good. All right, suit, good. All right. Yeah. So, so Don, that's where the bees go in and out of the hive. Right. Yeah. And you have a portion of it blocked yeah, off. I do. I keep a portion of it, or, or, or a lot of it, usually blocked because in the desert, it's really bad with wax moth. The moth will get in, and they will start laying eggs, and it's like a spider web in there that they do, and they eat the, the wax and everything, and they'll just do a hive in. Uh, yeah, really. Once they get control, this usually happens on a weak hive. Usually, what happens is something happens to the queen, or she's not laying good anymore, something like that, and the hive goes down in numbers of bees. And when that happens, uh, then the wax moth can move in. So, will, will and, bees leave if a queen becomes weak? Uh, no, they'll produce another. They'll queen. produce another one, yeah. like we were talking about on yeah. the way up. But if for some reason they don't have the eggs because that something wrong with that queen or she you know got something she died or whatever then they don't have that egg to produce because an egg only stays in an egg for three days so if they can't produce if they can't get the egg to produce a queen then they're doomed you know so unless you come along unless they're well a beekeeper is keeping the bees and he comes along and checking the hive and he sees oh there's no queen here. There's no eggs here. We got to get a queen in this hive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a queen, you can take a, a frame that has eggs on it and put it in there and let them produce their queen. But can you? Is the, there's also a business that you can buy queens from, right? Yeah, like yeah. Buy, I'm buy, online. Oh yeah, I buy queens from a couple different places, and uh, and uh, what I do, and that's how I get rid of the mean bees when they. Because what happens here in Arizona is they'll will uh, they'll uh, they'll hatch out a queen. That queen will get mated, and more than likely, say like almost 99% of the time, she'll end up mean. She's not mean at first, but when you get to two boxes like these hives, when you get to two boxes high, they all they they have more honey, they have more brood, they have everything in there to protect. And that's why they're getting mean because they want to protect what they have. So, wow. so they're usually not that bad if you just you can usually walk up to them like this and they're not bad. But when you open the hive, it's a whole different story. Then they're coming out to get you. Really? And they're coming out at your face. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's not. So, do that. so that's what happens and with the mean ones, and and that's why I order queens. From a couple different places, I'll order queens. It just depends on who's got them, you know, when I need them. And uh, most places you have to order uh, way ahead of time, and you got to know how many you're going to need. And but the place I order from is in Georgia. I can just call them up and say, "Hey, I need ten queens," and they'll ship me ten queens, and I can get them overnight. And <laughs> they're they're really good. Uh, kind of yeah, I'll get them UPS, and I'll just go down UPS and call me and. Say hey, your your bees are here, and I'll go down and get them. Now, do they have uh, do they have when you order them or, or uh, if, think about like horse racing? So they they breed these bloodlines. Is that I mean, is that like a science that's involved in the in the queen creating process? Yeah, they there's a lot of people that try to uh, get good genetics in their queens, so that they're good queens and they're they're good producing queens and they're good just nature queen wow yeah there's a lot going on with queen 
rearing, they call it. The people that raise the queens. Uh huh. There, yeah, there's a lot going on with that, with raising good queens and good quality queens. Wow. You know, it's going to last. And what's the average cost of a queen if you had to ship one out? The last ones I got was last month, and they was uh, thirty dollars a piece wow. plus the shipping. Plus the shipping. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure they fly them out here in first class, right? Yeah. yeah. It's because they're queens. They, I yeah. mean, they, they got to fly first class. Yeah. They get champagne and, and, and cherry or uh, strawberries and stuff. No, right? they actually mail, mail them out in a cardboard box. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's first class mail. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I right. get them overnight because I don't want I don't want them in some hot truck or whatever. You know. I mean it. And once in a while, I'll get you know some queens and one of them's dead for whatever reason you know and and this company i get them from they're pretty good i can call them and send them a picture of that dead queen mm -hmm. and they'll send me another one or, so or you, I, I just got to where i tell them just wait till i order some more and you can put it in the that one you know so how often do you have to replace a queen into a hive uh it i do it every year okay so just yeah. once a year for a yeah. hive yeah so you got Usually, 40 50 yeah. hives at ten dollars so just to get your queens is five six hundred dollars a year yeah give yeah. or take i'll spend a good six hundred dollars and that's why i uh that's why i do the bee rescue we actually started out risk what we call rescuing bees going out somebody's got bees under a building or something like that mm -hmm. we'll go out and get the bees out and bring them home and then we'll we'll have to they're always mean so we'll have to requeen them and get that mean trait uh, uh breed it out right. of them so you don't want to so, so so if someone has a has a bee infestation at their house and they've built a hive you, you don't want to kill those bees you want to call somebody like you to come out get those yeah. bees so you can rescue them put them yeah. back with other hives and make honey with them right right that's that's the the game of the plan but when when they're in like a house or a brick wall or something you know, there, there's not much of a way, you know, people don't want to cut their house out to get the bees and you just got to call pest control and put them down. There's some cases you, you know, if they're in a block wall, they don't want to tear that block wall down to get the, just to get the bees out. So, so, uh, yeah, I just don't pay no attention. It's, it's all right. It's almost like a 747 yeah, flying by my head right there. Yeah, they're just buzzing around. That scared me a little bit. No, I don't. No, don't be scared, or, so what's or the, just don't pay them any attention. So the bees that we're seeing here, mm -hmm. those are workers. Yeah, they're okay. all workers. Those. So these are not these are not breeding. These are sterile bees. Yeah. Okay. They they're building the hive. Right. So they're going yeah. out, getting the getting the they're, nectar, coming back, and right. building it. And who creates the wax? They're, uh, well, the the uh, uh. Those would be, I would think, the nurse bees. I never had anybody ask me that. Nurse who, bees. who makes the wax? So I never so, had anybody so you ask have, me that. So you have the workers, which would uh -huh. be considered drones? No, drones is the male bee, and they're a bigger bee, and you won't see them coming out and let, you know, I mean, you might, but uh, they're not really raising any queens right now, so they're you know it's kind of unlikely you'd see one there they may be in some of the hives but uh and what they do when they get done with the mating time is they kick their drones out they don't need them anymore right they don't want them in there eat, eating the honey Got so it. they kick them out so and the so so the worker bees that we're seeing here the the mass majority of the bees that we're seeing here yeah. these are the guys they're gal they're are they all they're all they're, males they're all they're all female female oh yeah. man jeez Be, uh, yeah bees <laughs> the worker bees are all female the queen's a female what you call a drone is a male and it's a lot bigger and it doesn't have a stinger it can't sting really yeah so so it, and its only purpose is to mate with the queen and there's one queen per hive. Yeah. So yeah. now tell me the significance of having just one level, two levels, three levels. I mean, it's just it... the stage. Now this one was a swarm. What happened is I had some of the bees that swarmed this time. And it's nature, it's hard to keep them from swarming, but it's just the, it's the way they reproduce, you know. And what they'll do is they'll raise another queen and then they'll take that old queen and take half of them and they'll fly out and they usually fly close. I've got them over on this Palo Verde tree. I got them over there. I had, oh man, I probably had maybe 10 hives to swarm that I got the bees. Now I probably had some to swarm that I didn't get them because I wasn't here. They're like going to go to the Mediterranean. And this is, this is one of them. See, I got right here uh, four 
123 swarm two that's the number two that i got that day so i got so there's another one that's got one right yeah okay this is the first swarm of that day and so, uh so when you say that, this was on four six so when you say they're swarming like you so as a as a beekeeper you just come out and you look around and you go oh exactly. hey there's, there's a swarm of bees and you go out there and you put a you put yeah. a, a a hive near them and try to put a no, queen I, in there i get the i just get the box and put it over there and uh i'll find the queen i'll look around and find the queen and i'll put her in a queen cage and i'll put her in the hive and then the other bees i just put the the box over there where the other bees are at and they'll go in it you gotta be kidding no they'll go in it because that's where their queen's at that's the way i do it uh there's a number of ways you can do it but that's the way i do it. i like to find that queen for one reason just to make sure a queen's there because uh I have had one that a little bitty swarm that wasn't a queen there, so it's up it's up there. So in you that little box up there, so, little what they call a new so new you, box. You put a queen in there and hope that they'll start yeah. producing a colony. Yeah. What I did when I got uh, some new queens and I requeened, uh, I just took one of the queens out, the old queen, and I put it in that box up there with them. Wow. So how many now? So how many bees would you say is in like a, a three stack like this? Well, I mean, what's the population of this uh, of this fine facility? Well, uh, there, there's probably around ten thousand bees to this wow. colony right here. Wow! So you got about yeah. three thousand in a, in a in a single give or take. Yeah, there's well thirty two fifty if my math yeah. is correct. <laughs> it's a uh, well, I kind of judge it by a, a package. You can buy what they call a package of bees. It's kind of like a size of a six pack. And uh, and they'll have, uh, I think it's uh, three pound of bees. And I think it's, I'm thinking 10,000 bees. So it's 10,000 bees make up three pounds. Yeah. Wow. So so that that's probably what you'd have right here, about 10,000. Yeah, then, that's, that's a good, that that would be more than than that. So what's the reason for for making a larger one versus just a single stack? Okay, well as they grow, is this, this a, is this a queen that's been divorced three times and just took you know the house when she left? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> no. This is this is uh, this is actually a good producing hive because it's it. got three boxes. Uh, this one right here, I did have six boxes high on. This one right here, I think it is. Oh wait, now here's a really big bee. What? Oh, no, that's a beetle. I'm sorry. Or is that a bee? Huh? Is that a bee or a beetle? No, that's a beetle. I've oh. been seeing them out here, yeah, and I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, they're getting in the hive, some kind of beetle. But I've never seen beetles around the hive. But sometimes you open that up, and there's one there. So you if know? you if you open this, they have problems back in Tennessee and all that with beetles. But I've never had a problem with them here. So if you open this hive, they'd be all everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, let's not do that. Especially Easy. if I'd have brought the smoker, I could have smoked them a little bit, and that helps. But you know, they're uh, let's not anger the bees. See, this is uh, one that I got another swarm. This is on four or five. Three. I got this is the first swarm of that day. I started numbering how many swarms because I come over here one day I had three swarms out here. Wow. So I started no I said, well I gotta know what's what, you know, how to tell so I just started numbering like that one swarm on that date and so is there a, is there a season like a, a particular yeah. season yeah and then uh, what's what, the season how long well, the season varies on where you're at but the 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 way it works is uh when it gets time for stuff to start blooming okay so spring that's that's swarm season okay yep because what they do is they swarm out and it, they they don't have anything when they swarm out so when they swarm out they gotta have you know they got to have a way to make honey and everything start their hive start their colony going mm -hmm. and that's why they do it then they do it when stuff is st just starting to bloom or it is blooming you know it could already be in bloom i mean and then what's the what's the lifespan of a of a, a hive i mean what well, what happens to the bees after the season well they say a queen uh, lasts five years uh uh, but I've never seen that. I've never got five years. I've got a couple years out of a queen, and that's about it. How long you know? do the, the workers 
uh, live a month or something like that they're not very long all right so so most most of the bees that are born are going to be the worker bees and you mentioned that those they have yeah. have an average lifespan of about 28 days I so the hive so. is continually producing a new batch of yeah. worker bees every month basically yeah right? that queen is laying and she's you know if she's a good queen she she can lay a you know anywhere from a thousand to two thousand eggs a day so they're producing the bees you know especially when things and now they'll slack down uh when things are not blooming they'll slack down even what, yeah, what here, are they, what are they doing in the off season? Are they like snowbirds? They just go down to the trailer park and drink beer? No, oh. they're they're hauling their water in to keep themselves cool. That's you know instead of them, you know that's that's their beer is the water to keep so cool. so even when the when the uh, in the off season the. Um, the, the the queen is still just laying eggs that's all they do that's their whole life yeah that's their whole lifespan yeah so you say a couple years that you've gotten out of one they're laying how many yeah. how many a day uh, anywhere from a thousand two thousand you know they wow. say they can lay up to two thousand but that's got a you know you're talking about the best of the best that does that you know those are the thoroughbreds yeah, yeah. Those, those are yeah so so if you have a bee you have a queen bee I mean, just think of the sheer numbers. So, say you have one that averages a thousand eggs a day. They're they're laying fifty-two thousand eggs a year. Double that if you get two thousand, of course. Of course, the, you're, you're having your workers, you know, because they they just actually work themselves to death. They going out working, getting nectar, pollen, and everything, bringing it back, and they're they're dying, you know, every day they're dying. Man, when you hear this bee that sounds really loud that flies around you and it's really loud. They're they're on their way out because their their wings has got frail yeah. and that's why they're loud. Really? They're flying, yeah. Wow. And, and so they're they're approaching their last days, you know. Interesting. And wow. It, but uh, but when a when a bee is hatched out, their first job is cleaning their cell. They clean their cell out. And, and you know it's well, like it's they, like us when you get up and you make your bed you know right when they get out of their cell they make their they make their bed in other words their cell what do they just and, eat it or and then no i don't know how they do it but that's you know they clean it out and get it ready for you know but another egg in do you have it. like a little supply of little tiny shovels around here <laughs> that you, just, you just leave them out in no, the evening time and they take the shovels in there no it's, it's all natural for them they That's, don't need any tools all their very, tools is built on them very cool so they they do that and then they and then they become a you know a, a nurse bee what they call nurse bees and they take care of the they'll take care of the queen so mom and take care of the queen they follow the queen around taking care of her and then they and then some of them would just take care of the Making the new similar. eggs that's been dropped in. They'll they'll you know take care of that and and feed that egg along the way you know until it's cow. Oh wow, and, this is cool. Yeah, this guy I mean, right here. Really a lot of see that Sean? Poor yeah. guy. He worked himself to death. Yeah, just yeah. laid right there and died. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like me when I'm. Yeah, you'll see them on the ground too. You know, all dead and everything. And, that know. looks like me after a day of repairing sprinklers at the house. And then they have they have uh, uh, the bees that uh, take out the dead bees. You know, that's why you see them laying around here. They're all dead and everything. Where the bees has took their dead out and drop them out. You know. And now what's now? Some of these have wood, but you have a piece of uh, some sort of what, what kind of? Well, I did that. Uh, this was. Uh, this was another swarm that I got on uh, 3, 327, and it was a big swarm, so I just put that there. That was, uh, they kept going back to it, they, they was on a greasewood bush, uh -huh. and they kept, you know, they was going back, some of the bees was going back to that, so I just got the greasewood bush and just stuck it in there. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. And they all came in. Yeah, they're just, they're just staying there at the hive, you know, after I did that. Wow. So what it was, it had the scent of the queen on that greasewood, so, uh, so that's what it was. Well, well, thanks for bringing us out and showing us the, the beginning stages of yeah. how the bee business works and you guys gather your swarms and you put them together yeah. I think next we're going to go back up to the facility and we're going to spin some honey and you're going to show us how you collect it yes yeah now that see that stand over there yes sir I built that for the mean mean bees that I get any mean bees I can put them out there and kind of get them away from the general spot here not that it really matters I just know what's mean what's not but what's happened is 
I've requeened them and, I, and they're all good bees now. So I need to move them over here and get some of these, you know, I, I know I got some mean bees here. So typically uh, when you have a quote unquote mean beehive, you're going to take the whole hive and just put it over there. That's like the detention. Well, sometimes I'll haul there. it home, which is a couple miles away, you know, and because if you just tuck it over there, then you're going to have the, the worker bees coming back. They're trying to find the hive and it's not here, you know. Right. So what I do is I'll take it to the house for a week and then I'll bring it over there, you oh. know, then I'll take it over there. They're like teenagers. You got to put them on restriction. For yeah, a you got to. You, yeah, you, if you just move it, we're not far enough away. So if you just move it over there. All your workers are coming over here. Even if they go out of the hive over there, they're going to come back here. Right. And then you just come over here and cause a ruckus. Yeah, they're just over here looking for their for their hive. It's I mean, they'll eventually get in with some others or something, maybe, you know. It's kind of like Mike Tyson walking into a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go on up to the or house. They, or they'll get beat up and they'll kick them out, you know. <laughs> Very interesting. Hive. And it doesn't look like a whole lot going on here, so it doesn't really look good for this hive. But this is one, see, that I I uh, couldn't find the queen. And then at uh, 518, I put a marked queen in. So that's what I'm wanting to look. And I'm so wanting to gonna see be, we're gonna be looking for what, the mark right queen, what the marked queen we, is. I started about a... Do we need the smoker? Yeah. I started uh, about a, a, a okay, couple ready. years ago barking the queen and uh, barking the queen marking her oh marking right her. on top of her head there you mark it put a color on there and they have a color for every year so this year it's red is that is yellow, ash year, is that all yellow. across the beekeeping yeah. nation yeah everywhere so yeah. everybody really yeah everybody does the same how color. much smoke do we need oh just not much for these this is not a big hive or anything so you just drop the smoke right in there. Yeah. There you go. Oh, man, you can hear them. Yeah. All right, that, that's pretty good. Now I'll take this empty frame out. I want to get to in here where stuff's at. What I want to do is I want to look. I want to see. How do you spot the queen? Now see right here we have young, young larvae right here. This is some really young larvae, what I call half-baked. It's about halfway to be in the cap. This is honey right here. How long does it take to get to this stage, half-baked? Half-baked. Now, is, is this one right there, like those two right there? Yeah. Are they, those are cleaning their cells, like you said? No, those are, those are taking care of these, these half-baked ones. They're just taking care of it. Oh, the, the cell is half-baked, not the yeah. bee itself. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the, the bee itself. Oh, okay. See? See, if you look, you see some really small right there. That's probably about five days or six days, something like that. And then, it, 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 see, it gets older. There's some younger stuff here and then a little the older stuff down here. In there? Yeah, and see right here, oh. there's some real young stuff. See, you can see, you might even see an egg in there, but it's so young, it's just barely starting to make a U-turn in there. You know, when you see that, that's when it it comes out like I say it takes a it's it's an egg for three days and then after that it's it develops into a larvae you know it ends up getting that that U shape to it and wow. that's just the bee uh, growing you know just like a person does in a stomach you know they how, they got a cell they grow in how long does it take to fill a, a what do you call it a cage uh, a frame a frame yeah how long does it take to fill a frame with honey Oh shoot, I don't know. That just depends on the bee. Oh, look at all that. It's raw honey in there. Yeah. Yeah, what they're doing is, as they hatch out, see those, that's as capped yeah. is a bee, but as it hatches out, they're filling it with honey. Now this, so this guy right there with his head in there, he's filling it with honey. Yeah. Yeah, more than likely that's what he's doing. Wow. Or she's doing. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, that, that's a really good sign. That tells me right there that more than likely I got a queen. I mean, I know I've got a queen the last, at least the last four or five days, five or six days, something like that, that has laid that, that stuff, that uh -huh. has laid them eggs to produce that larvae there. So, so. Oh, wow. oh, oh. Uh, we, really care, do they? Nah, we can smoke them if we need to, but 
So these see, ones with see the that's that's young larvae too in there. So these ones that are capped. Yeah. They're either gonna they're gonna be they're, they're gonna hatch out. See this hatch? one right here is hatching out right here. See that? Oh yeah. See that little? Where, yeah, it's hatching out right now. Oh, it's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming out. Oh look at it. Oh, it's a little baby. Let me get the stuff off my. Yeah. How long does that take? Oh shoot! It it it'll be hatching out today, but it she usually don't take that long when they get that far along. But uh, mm -hmm. who knows? It's just ever how long it takes to if I could be still enough to to help it. Oh, look at that. Yep. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. Oh, cool. oh, it's sticking its antennas out. Here it comes. Oh! Oh! Oh, that is <laughs> so cool. You scared it. It went back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> there she's coming. Oh, there that. she goes. Brand new baby. Yep. So, that, like you said, the first thing they do is clean themselves. Yep. Oh, look at that. Congratulations, Don, you're a granddad. <laughs> to a brand new one millionth of an ounce baby bee. Yeah. Yeah, she can go to work. <laughs> how now how long when they come out, their DNA, it just tells them time to work, right? Yeah. They don't I mean they don't waste any time. No. So this one right here is filling that cell, or you call it a cell? Yeah. It's filling that cell with, with honey. Yeah. Now all of this you hit a button for you? No, I got it. So if you look at the, the, the cage or the, the screen, what'd you call it? A cage? No. What's that? The, one the of frame. These, a frame. So one of those frames, they build all of that comb. Yeah. And it's built out of pollen or, 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 or I mean wax, or wax and yeah. such. So their bodies generate the wax from getting the the, um, the nectar from yeah. the local flora and fauna. Yeah. Yeah. They they make the wax and see that's got larvae in it too. That frame. So all that in there. So no queen? I haven't seen the queen. She's in here somewhere though, because there's larvae there. She's got to be in here somewhere. But what I want to see, what I want to make sure is if that queen is the one I put in. I want to make sure that it's a mark queen. If it's not a mark queen and it's not the one I put in, they evidently then something happened. Because I haven't checked this hive in. Uh, Oh, since that 18th. So how do you since May the 18th? How do you spot the queen? Well, she's bigger. She's a longer bee. You'll know when you see her. She's a longer bee, a uh, longer abdomen to her, and everything. They're just putting honey in this one. The crown usually gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman's got jokes. Yeah. It's like that's how you tell the difference between a regular bee and a killer bee. Killer bees have a See, she should have been on one of them with the that has the the brood on it. It's kind of unlikely, but the brood. What's the brood? The brood is like what we was looking at with the with like the half baked stuff I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. That's it's uh that's the brood. That's uh, the the so, baby bees. In so other words, so this right here mm -hmm. is all bee made. Yeah, no, that this is a plastic foundation. Oh, okay. And then they draw the comb from that. See, like you can see where they draw it out, and uh, and then they put honey or the queen will lay eggs in it. So no and queen. All that. I'm not seeing her. There, but... right there. there yeah, there she is with Whoa. the red dot. Oh yeah. I spotted her right away. Sure did. What makes the red dot? Is it like a paint? Or yeah, a it's dye? a it's a paint like a. Like a marker. There she yeah. is. Yeah, that's a good mama right there. Yep. She's an Italian queen. Uh, so she's got like or, a... or what they say is European. She's a European. Wouldn't it, queen. Be, wouldn't it be a European? <laughs> There's all kind of different queens, you know. Coleana queens, and they're just all different make, you know. 
different races, I guess you could say. So is she is she looking for a, a, a comb that's that's deeper so she can start laying? Yeah, she's looking for a place to lay, but I don't think she's gonna find nothing on her. So, but so, you don't move her. No, she I does just, her own thing. Yeah, I just leave her. She could have when we smoked her. She could have ran over because she shouldn't be over here on this. She would typically be over here where the where the yeah. comb is uh, I'm gonna deeper. Put her back in right now. Yeah, she would be on the uh, on the on the frame that that has the brood or the the baby bees on. That's normally where you find the queen at. Now, is there a science between keeping them close like that? No, what you you just want them close together. The bees can get through them and everything, so that's all you want. And what I do is I try to I try to uh, keep a little gap on each side and push them together. And what that does is give airflow on Got both it. sides. Now where's the water source for these bees? Uh, they're over under that tree right there. I just smoke them a little bit and just make sure that they stay down. And then I'll, uh, this is a homemade inner cover here that I just made because I ran out of inner covers. So, or actually, yeah, this one is sold, so I uh, just made one for her because she didn't. Have there been te technological advances in different types of uh, smoke? Like other industries that give a different effect for every type of bee? No. Oh, okay. No, it's right. just, I'm just what wondering. You, what you want is a cool smoke. You want to, when you feel the smoke come out, you want it to be a cool smoke where you don't feel no heat. See, right. that's that's pretty cool right there. You don't feel no heat from that. Oh, wow. Oh, so that's like the topper thing you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. And this one, I have a queen excluder. That means the queen's in the bottom. She can't come up and lay eggs in the in the honey. Okay, so you're just going straight for honey on the top. Yeah, that's I'm why just, you call it a honey box. Yeah, right. I'm just gonna see what what this looks like because I put this box on. They probably haven't had a chance to do anything because I just took honey off of them. Yeah, it don't look like much is going on. Little honey there look like. Let's see what it looks like. There's a little honey there. On the top? Yeah, near the top, and they just haven't got that far along with it. They're still they're still working on it. So do they typically work from the top down? Yeah. Why, why is yeah. that? Uh, well, in the wild, they'll attach their comb and at the top of whatever they're attaching it to, and then they work down, and they'll work around usually like that. Oh, okay. And because the comb hangs down, they can't work from the bottom because gravity you know, it, gravity, it, the comb is so soft, If even if they tried to go from the bottom up, it would fall it would over, collapse. it's so soft, yeah. Because that comb is really soft when well, you they- got some there too, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, these, see oh, these- Oh look, that one's got a bunch on the side, on the other side. Yeah, see this? So they're all making honey. Yeah, they're all, yeah. Yep. See their heads in the, in there. So in the, in the wild, uh -huh. I mean, obviously, we know what the what the purpose is here is to create honey. But in the mm -hmm. wild, when they make a a, a hive, mm -hmm. and then they do the honey, they make the honey. What I mean, what happens? Is it just the, the what, it, animals eat it, or what, no? They, what? they 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 make the honey for them. Energy. They just make more than they need. They're hoarders, you know. They just make way more honey than they need. So so. It, it's just honey for them. That's what they're doing. They're not making it for us. We just go in and get it. Right. We, you know, they used to call it robbing the hive. Right. Now they call it harvesting. Okay. <laughs> they want to be nice about it these days, I guess. You how, know, how don't want to offend the bees. How long does it take to, oh look, they're building it right there. Yeah. How long does it take to build a whole screen? Oh shoot, if, if there's a good honey flow and everything, they can build it out really fast, but I've never really timed it really tell you the truth a week two weeks yeah it would i would say uh yeah i would say a good couple of weeks really yeah i mean it depends so some places it might be a heavier flow see our flow is dying out now so you see all the palo verde trees there's no blooms on the palo verde trees anymore right 
And so it's dying out. I mean, the flowers are dying, they're getting hot, and we ain't getting no water to, to keep them going, you know. So, so they're, they, they would not fill this whole box up. They, they don't have the honey oh, flow to do enough. it. Yeah. All kind of interesting things that goes into making honey. So now we're back in the honey room with BJ. BJ, and this is a funny thing, BJ's allergic to bees, but she makes some of the greatest honey in Mojave County. So what she's going to show us next is she's going to show us how we extract the honey from the frame. This is from the frame. From the frame. Mm -hmm. So why don't you show us what we do here. All right. So this is a fully capped frame of honey. As you can see, both sides have wax cappings all the way around it. Oh, this one's got a little open nectar on this side. So basically, and I usually do it in that tank over there, but we're just going to take this here capping knife and we're going to, he hates this kind. We have lots of other ones and you're just going to get those cappings off. And that is what goes in this tank. This is called a capping tank right here. And you said that you take these cappings and you make uh, you make wax bars and you do soaps and, and, and Lotion, I'm guessing lotions and lip candles, balm, lip balm, candles, everything. So everything's used. Yep. Everything. We sell everything. Okay, you... I'm not uncapping the ones that has the nectar in it because there's no cappings on there. Okay. So that saved me. I didn't have to uncap the whole thing. But this thing. one here is almost fully capped. Yep. So it's just mainly just scratching them off. We have hot knives for it too. But once you get about halfway with a hot knife, it cools off. And then it just drags through it and does the same yeah. damage that this fork's doing. But this is a capping. It's a capping tool. You sure that's not a hair pick? <laughs> well, I'll give it to you and we can give it a whirl <laughs> here. Would you like some? <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing I've learned being in that bee suit and walking around and doing all this. And as you can see on camera, it this is not a... This is a hot, sweaty job. This is not easy. Mike Rowe should probably be here doing this. <laughs> Tell you what, the thing is, is people don't realize is that every penny these bees bring in goes back into the bees, number one, but the beekeepers like us who have to do this. It's a passion. It's And it's hot. Yeah. It's very hot because the most important time of the year, the most work that you do is right now. Yeah, when it gets warm. When it's hot. I've done this at 120 degrees. Oh my gosh. All right, so now that we've got our cap, our uncapped frame here, we're gonna make a mad dash for that tank over there. And actually, if you want to bring it closer, sure, just go ahead and bring it closer for now while we load it. That way, I'm not see the honey dripping off of here. That's why I say we put that light on here, so the heat can get in there and get this honey that's dripping off to go out the bottom. So it's you keep the honey out of the here. Bottom. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. all right. So much. So here we go. Don, you should have just took it out of the refrigerator. Huh? In the garage. Take it from the fridge in the garage. I did, but we oh, okay. Oh. All right. So that's one. This particular extractor is hand crank, so you do all the work. So You're gonna, this, and it holds three frames. That's so it. that one. So all of this is honey. Yep. That's uncapped nectar at this point. So you're just taking the caps off. Yep. Just taking the caps off what isn't already done for me. Wow. Man, the smell in here is, 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 I mean, it smells so good. <laughs> All your gear smells that like that, your hair smells like it, your vehicle, everything. Really? You know when you're around a beekeeper. Sweaty. If now you, this if you a know lot the darker. smell. Is that a different, is it's this the same? Older wax. Old, yeah, it's older wax. When we have new frames, brand new foundation brand and everything. No, I'm not. <laughs> he does this a lot. <laughs> only thing he doesn't do is what I'm doing. <laughs> he takes care of the bees, he pulls the honey, and then BJ takes over the business. <laughs> That's it. That's about it. I have to harvest, bottle, no. sell. <laughs> All of that is just Yeah, stick ready. your finger in there. You can't, I can't I? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, heck yeah. Take it right out of there. It's nice and warm. Go ahead, you guys. Try it. There's no taste like it. And I oh. tell people our bees have their own flavor, and they do. I know when it's wow. RBs, and don't ask me why, but I do. <laughs> that Maybe is so good. <laughs> you got some wax with yours, but that's okay. 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 Chomp it down. Oh, yeah. It ain't going to hurt yeah. you. So we sell honeycomb and herbs herbs, but we don't have any yet. Really? It's coming down the pipeline. PJ, where, lo, where do you sell your honey locally? We sell it at herbs herbs. Um, Noreen sells it for yeah, us Yeah, Noreen Gilmartin just yes, took over that business. Yes. She's, She's a, a nice friend. lady. She's a nice She's a lady. Friend. Yeah. Riverbound across the street. We're at the swap meet every Sunday during the season. We're also at the farmer's market, the cause, the uh -huh. second and fourth Saturday of the month. And then we do Bullhead City starting in September. 
on the first of every month all the way through May. And then all of this is honey that's going to be canned or, be or bottled. bottled or, yep. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yep. So in a typical... What we do is we put it in this because if we put it in the bottles, we would have to buy so many bottles. Right. That, you know, it's just not something we want to spend that much money on right out of the gate. Oh. So we put it in five gallons, two gallons, one gallon, everything we can find, you know, we put it in. And how, how and much honey we bottle you, it from there. How much honey would you say you, you produce in, in a year? Because well, your season's pretty short, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is here. Our there. best year was two years ago and it was three hundred gallons. Three hundred gallons. That was a lot yeah. for us. I had to have help. I had a friend of mine come and help because his wife had just busted herself up, broke her leg and arm. Oh no. And he couldn't go home, so he's like, Well, I might as well help you. Right. He bit off more than he could chew. Yeah, he helped, <laughs> he helped me get honey off the All right, So this one's ready? This, yeah. yep. Just stick it right down then in that he next Does it matter which side? It's I know. Uh, it's stuck on there. Well, oh, it's a screw. Okay, again. just stick it down okay. in there. And yeah, work with it. It'll spin. And then there's a sweet spot that you can sit it where it'll go all right the way there. in. Oh, you got it. I got That's it? Okay, yep. All right. Then we're gonna get it to the last one. Hmm, got some wax. <laughs> all right. This one oh, has a, oh, this one's got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, the reason why we put these things in the freezer when we're not using them, this is one of the biggest nemesis in Navasu. This here, those are little baby eggs for what's called wax moth. The wax moth will start, and you can see it here, start eating the wax. When they do, they're not interested in the honey, they're not interested in the bees. All they want is the wax. So they're going to ruin this whole thing. The, those, now those eggs won't, but wherever mama's at, she's a full grown moth. She lays larvae that look similar to our baby bees but they ended up being big worms and they just go through and trash everything. Oh no, they'll have so, a web on there that's like a spider web. They can see it, yeah, right terrible. here. And that spot right there. So it's not gonna hurt our honey, everything strains out. It's not harmful to us. They live with the bees all the time, but if the hive is strong enough, then the wax moth can't take over. They'll stay down in the bottom and wait for whatever scraps the bees throw them. But if you have a weak hive, then the weak hive is gonna let them start and because they can't control what's going on. And they just won't attack they can't them. Protect it like no, well, they try, but sure. when they become too, you know, it's too overpowering, there's too many, then the bees will do one of two things. They're gonna pack up and leave, or they just won't attend to their frames. Mm. Can I so, try to scrape it? Yeah. So we'll yeah, stand it up on that just for, to keep to it from moving it around. Sure. And you just, not so just hard, go, right? Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get the, the knack of it there. Yeah, and you're just looking to get those cabins off of there. Kind of like so? Yeah. And you can go down that side. It's okay if you go into the uncapped a little bit. They're going to come out anyway. Oh, you're a quick learner. <laughs> He's a quick study there. Don't get any ideas. I already got a full-time <laughs> job. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> you see that 80-foot rig out there? Yeah. Don't drive itself. <laughs> So how yeah. much of this do you have you to get off? To well, it. we want to get all those cappings off. More? If not, we're going to spin it. No, just go on down to the next. Oh, place. down here. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, look at all that honey. Yep. We first bring them out of the hives when we're trying to take the frames right back out. The honey's really hot. And when it gets on your hand, it's oh, warm. Oh, you sorry. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm in your way. You're not in my way. Oh, now, I don't right, want to get that's rid of that, right? That's good side. honey. Yeah, that's good honey. It's gonna, it's gonna be okay in the cabinet. Yeah, it goes in there and then it drains out of there. Yeah, there's a screen in the bottom. Typically, that tank and this tank go together. Oh, look at all of that. <laughs> we get the mother load right there. The good thing about beekeeping is you have no waste. You know, because when you're done getting the honey out of that wax and everything, then you melt that wax down and make, make pure beeswax out of it that you can sell. So that's, is this where the term mind your beeswax comes from? <laughs> well, once it, you, we have that sign on our booth with where I sell the beeswax. And so that people would put asking me, is that soap? Is that honey? Can I eat it? You're there? perfect, BJ. Now what? <laughs> put them right down in there. Yeah. Try to find that sweet spot. Okay. <laughs> Good job. All right. If you want to spin wow. it, we'll let you spin. It's hot in here. How, uh, how, do, how fast? All right. Let's move it out. <laughs> Well, you know what? Whatever you got in your belt, let's put it that way. Yeah, it oh, it's it's shame. it's geared. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get it going so that you can see it and you can hear it if you listen. The honey slinging out. Wow, you're getting to it there, buddy. 
Man, this is a hot jump. Seriously, how long you got to do it for? Well, they say about 10 minutes. I don't. I just do as much as I can and then just keep spinning it. And the bad thing is, is if they're unequal, in other oh, words, really you have heavier oh, frames on yeah. one side, it bounces. And it is so hard to work with. So I was going too fast. No, it's, you know, uh, you go I got a sprain wrist, honey. Oh. Yeah. So wow. I'm babying it. This is really hot work. And then, well, I can't open it when I'm turning it, but it's slinging the honey on the side. And then, it and just then in a warm down. building like this, it's going to melt down. Then you got to take it out and turn them over and do it again. Mm. Yep. These centrifugal force. You keep them balanced. The, oh, so the they it's like a washing machine that goes off balance. Yep. So it doesn't it right. fling all the way through. You got to spin them around. Yep. Mm. So when you're done, you're hoping that you end up with dry honeycomb, just like oh, that. It's all inverted. Yep. Yeah, well, they, that's because they grow them out. And then you can see pollen. Oh, wait a minute. I think I broke there. your frame. Oh, it sucked through, Dawn. That's what's oh, the matter. Okay. Nah, you didn't. Put that. too much of that on it. <laughs> Maybe we can turn it back around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. This is the one that we had the little trails. Now you can really see them. And that hurts a oh, beekeeper here. right there. Right there? Yeah. We've lost so many bees because of wax moth. There you go. There's the little buddy right there. Oh, is that, that a wax moth? That little guy is a wax moth. That's the, that's the baby. So it's been, when it cocoons, it's going to make a moth. And then the moth is the one that makes all the eggs and... It tastes and, like chicken? <laughs> I couldn't tell you to be honest with you. I got it tight that time. Oh. See, now it's got the wax and everything, so that's why you use a two-point sieve. First point of the sieve is going to take out the wax and the bees, and then the second one's going to remove some of the pollen. So there's a one down in there underneath. You can see it's two layers. So out of three, out of three frames, how much, like how many bottles or jars of honey will you get? Well, I would say that these were pretty light, so they're probably going to be a couple pounds a piece, maybe. Maybe more. How much does honey weigh? It's 12 pounds per gallon. 12 pounds. Yeah. Water and gas and all that's eight pounds per gallon. So I'm sweating. <laughs> it's hot in here. <laughs> and then you just bottle it now this isn't how I bottle in the house it's a little bit different but same idea get the honey in the bottle look at that yep. almost perfect pour yep <laughs> and there is Pato Verde triple threat Don BJ truly appreciate you having us out the circle t honey ranch we really appreciate that you did mention that uh you do welcome folks to come out here and do tours and such yes we do and if you want to come out and you want to buy honey from circle t if you can't get me on the phone because i'm a busy person i apologize for that but if you come out and you find our house and you're going oh there's no bees well just look for the yellow bees and the circle t on the gates they're all over the gates you can see them and we do welcome people to just show up knock on the door and i'll definitely get you your honey and take care of you I can tell you it's a it's a really neat experience coming out here and learning about honeybees and the and the life cycle dawn. You've been very, very informative. I, I would say I've been extremely educated as to how difficult it is to do what you do. Uh, thank you so much. You gave us a triple uh, or a bottle of your triple threat. We're going to take this home. Our cameraman says he's going to go home and make some honey bread with it today. <laughs> so I want to truly thank you for having us out. I truly appreciate you. Remember, folks, Circle T right here in Lake Havasu. Go on oh, yeah. out and see them. You can find them at the farmer's market. You can find them at the uh, swap meet in season. And you mentioned that you also sell everything that you do at uh, Herb's Herbs. So thank you once again. And remember, folks, buy local or buy by local. Thanks again for joining yeah, us on Mojave Mortgage Adventures. We'll see you next time.